Hello, this is 3D printed animatronic creature, and this is going to be just teeth, and to show you how to ch change these uh, resin printed teeth into dentures for the animatronic creature. As most people know, silicone and resin don't get along, and the inhibitors where it doesn't like to cure all the way, and it's just a big negative with 3D printing in resin. So you have to make adjustments by sealing the so-called uh, resin print with Krylon Crystal Clear Spray. I put like three coats. And I also I put a thin layer of super glue over this whole thing. And just to get it to have a barrier to mold and not, you know, touching the resin. Because it, it won't cure the silicone. And it's a big negative. So I've tried everything from clear fingernail polish and just tried certain materials just to, so I could mold these things in silicone. But once again, here's Krylon, this clear coat, and this thin super glue. You know, I do a lot of research, and I'm just trying to make my, you know, I make things work. The super glue, it did have some curing problems only on the bottom, but I didn't put any kind of a super glue on the bottom. I did spray them with Crawdall and Crystal Clear, and I'm pretty sure that there's some kind of secret that I've not been able to find yet. But I secure these resin prints on these little uh, base plates of the mold box. After securing the teeth on these base plates, I put the frame on, and I do a little tack weld with super glue on the, on the frame itself just to hold it in place. Uh, it it's not going to leak any. It's just uh, just for security. I mean, it has really high uh, tolerances set on these boxes where they they literally snap in place. Now these small boxes I design are pretty high tolerance as far as they got a tight fit and they snap in place. And I'm using Smooth On uh, Molestar 30 and with a good shore, good hardness there. Most people probably have used this before. And I clean up the mold, demold the teeth, and I check to see if there's any residue, uncured resin, I mean, uncured silicone there. Uh, and there was a light coat in certain areas that didn't look like it didn't cure well, that maybe I just didn't have, you know, it's just, once again, you know, it's just one of them things that, you know, it, it, most, most of it cured well, and it looks good, and I think I got a good copy out of it. But I do clean my molds with dental acrylic. And, but as you see here, I'm using some monomer, and I just wipe it out clean, see if there's any, like, any blue resin or blue silicone onto the Q-tip there. So what I do here is I fill up the molds with, with dental acrylic monomer, the, the, the clear liquid and I do a salt and pepper method where I, I drip some monomer in the mold and I sprinkle in some more uh, tooth acrylic and this is 62 shade which is pretty common it's not white really white really very white teeth look kind of fake when you do this salt and pepper method you know you add the monomer and add sprinkle some tooth acrylic in there you really only have about four or five minutes work time and then you want it to it starts to cure pretty quick so immediately you put it in a pressure pot with the water being a temperature of 100 degrees now this acrylic is called cold cure acrylic and it's also recognized as being quick cure acrylic heat cure you have to really heat it for like two hours in a press for for two hours and boil it for for almost an hour also but as you see here these are all hard dental acrylic teeth they're all colored there's some imperfections here and there but um, I think I re poured these but I made another set because I had a bubble in one but then I go to the dental aid and I start grinding all of the gingiva area and just leaving the teeth to where I I, I just want the teeth that is shown to be visible. But I've had this dental aid for 30 years, bought it brand new. It's a wonderful tool. It's a, 
I mean, it does everything. It'll take any bits and burrs and sanding disc and wheels, and I can use water on it. And it's really a good tool to have, but it's quite expensive. But it's just a, always, you know, being in a dentist dental industry for 30 years you get where you love a tool and but uh i just simply grind it using certain rocks and disc and burrs and i just get it really close as i can to uh just pretty much just have the teeth not any kind of a uh I, i'm going to be replacing what i'm cutting away with pink acrylic instead of the tooth acrylic but the thing about this tool here is that you know you have to buy a bunch of burrs and discs and and it can be quite expensive but any of these you know i can get any dremel burr to fit in there and and you can get something similar at harbor freight but it it i mean for polishing and pumicing that's one thing but because uh, it, it can take, you know, a little water could be on it. But it's just kind of a, it, even though that this might be somewhat overkill, but it, when you see the results, it really looks well. And, and once again, I did this kind of work in the dental industry, making what we call rebases, where I replaced the pink, the pink teeth of the patient's denture and replaced it with new pink. And that would be a process of making a mold and putting a putty matrix onto their whole denture. And when I made the mold, I just removed their whole denture out, removed all of the pink and replaced it with new. And, uh, but as you see here, I'm just prepping the so-called teeth. I wipe them down with monomer, clean up any burr marks or, or like little things that are dangling off dust or whatever and I just simply just insert them back into the silicone mold and they just pop in place and I just do it to the the lower arch also and though with advancement of 3d printing they're they're really pushing uh, 3d printed dentures now which is is pretty neat and, and <clears throat> it kind of eliminate certain processes like you know a lot of stuff was waxed and if you don't if you do it digitally you don't have to use wax anymore but this is the same way I'm doing another salt and pepper method but this time I'm using pink acrylic instead of tooth acrylic but all dental acrylic needs to go into a pressure pot and this prevents porosity which is air bubbles and you, you submerge them completely in the water with this type of acrylic there's other acrylics like a poor acrylic it's kind of wet but mainly it's just uh trying to avoid the air bubbles and pressure helps it harden quicker and but uh the pressure i'm putting on is like 20 pounds in the pressure pot and i leave it in there for probably a, roughly about 30 minutes but i've done as little as 15 minutes but as you see here it's the i mean the water is like 100 degrees but uh, it's all cured. It's very hard dental acrylic, and I'm happy with the results so far. Now I'll just go back to the dental lathe and remove all this splash and do any kind of detail work, make sure if there's any bubbles that I need to patch and make adjustments to. You know, I made a lot of creature teeth. I made a lot. I made a lot of human dentures too. Probably two hundred thousand dentures in my thirty years of doing this kind of work. But it, it's really a fun process of, of working with dental acrylics. And I just love creature teeth. <laughs> I mean, it makes the creature. I mean, uh, I've made, like once again, I've made several different kind of creature teeth. And it's a fun is doing like a lost wax process. And I mean, you can, and I've made large very large human set of teeth before and it's it's really it's an art form i've always enjoyed it and 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 i use as far as dental acrylic i also use dental acrylic to make eyes too there's a lot of people in the industry as far as the movie industry that used to be or 
part-time dental lab technicians and one of the famous one was uh, John Chambers that did Planet of the Apes. He did uh, prosthetics and in the military and but this is some of my work I've done in the past and made a bunch of Wookiee teeth and made a uh, impression of a dire wolf teeth and turned them in from a skull. Here they are here. But I've also uh, did it on my animatronic in 2007. But it's a it's a lost wax process where you, you carve around your plastic teeth and wax and then you make a mold and you ball off the wax and replace it with dental acrylic. But, you know, since I've worked with dental acrylic and, and most what they call glass eyes are dental acrylic, but it's a different form. It's more of a gel. But here I did 3D printed uh, teeth on my very first printer I got in 2000. I guess it was in uh, 2017, but but back to these teeth here, I just pretty much, uh, and sorry about the out of focus, but uh, this, uh, but you see here I'm pumicing with a uh, wet pumice. And this is a rag wheel. You have a pumice wheel and you have a polish wheel. And you have this polishing compound called rouge. And you just simply, uh, polish these teeth now my my rag wheel is a little damp because you can burn the acrylic but you'll have these shining just like dentures but uh it it, it did well i'm happy with it got to make some adjustments and and uh it looks like a uh, little creature dentures well it looks like we have some creature teeth for the animatronic and now we're going to Fit them in a little bit. Probably going to need to make some little adjustments with a bite. But as you see, I just put these teeth together and just slide them into place and see what we get. But look, y'all, I hope y'all enjoy this. And hope it kind of helps. But uh, but here they are. I hope y'all like. And thanks for all the subscribers and comments and thumbs up. Later.